There are many believers that think saying a sinner's prayer, or prayer of salvation, is all it takes to gain eternal life, but they are wrong. Scriptures tell us we must be born again, to get into heaven. You are not born again by just saying you believe, even the demons believe and tremble. Jesus explained this to the Pharisee, Nicodemus. John 3 3, quote, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. End quote. Jesus further explained, what he meant by being born again. John 3 5, quote, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. End quote. When we are physically born, as we know, it's out of amniotic fluid, which is water. But that birth doesn't allow us into the kingdom of heaven, as we are all born into sin, because of Adam and Eve. So we need a second birth, but it's not a physical one this time of course. It's spiritual. This is not a one-time prayer. John the Baptist came making the path for Jesus, using the baptism of repentance. He baptized in water, to signify the washing of sins, and becoming a new person, in readiness for accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Mark 1 4, quote, John did baptize in the wilderness, and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. End quote. Acts 19, 2-4, quote, He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. End quote. John said of Jesus. Mark 1, 7-8, quote, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. End quote. Jesus called all to repentance when he started his ministry. Matthew 4:17, quote, From that time Jesus began to preach, and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. End quote. So when someone confesses and believes Jesus died for their sins and rose again, and asks Jesus to become their Lord and Savior, they receive the Holy Spirit, which is justification. The Holy Spirit then leads them into sanctification, and that is your spiritual rebirth. The Bible tells us what a spiritual rebirth is. 2 Corinthians 5:17, quote, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. End quote. This is not saying that Jesus' righteousness is a substitute for yours, you as a person have to become new in righteousness, which is through the Holy Spirit's leading. Romans 8 1, quote, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. End quote. So if you walk after the flesh, you are condemned. 1 Corinthians 2, 15-16, quote, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. End quote. What is it to have the mind of Christ? Of course it's to be righteous and holy. 2 Corinthians 3.18, quote, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. End quote. Romans 8.29, quote, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. End quote. Again, being in the image of Jesus means we must be righteous and holy like he is. We must heed the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 2.11, For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, 
for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, end quote. So if you ignore the Holy Spirit which is leading you into sanctification, you won't be Jesus' brethren. Galatians 5, 15-18, quote, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. End quote. So if you don't walk in the Spirit, you are automatically judged by the law, because you are not walking in the faith in obedience. So for all that those ass believers call obedience and repentance legalism, which they are not, if they are not obedient and repentant, they have put themselves under the law. Galatians 5, 22-23, quote, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. End quote. Galatians 6, 8, Quote, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. End quote. So if you sow to the flesh, you don't get everlasting life. Galatians 5, 24-26, Quote, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. End quote. So if you haven't crucified your flesh, or aren't actively striving to, and asking Jesus for his help in doing so, you are not Christ's. You must walk in the Spirit to be born again. Galatians 5, 19-20, quote, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. End quote. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20, quote, What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, Therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. End quote. Is it glorifying God to be in sin? Romans 7 6, quote, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. End quote. Romans 8, 2 4, quote, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. End quote. Romans 8:14. quote, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. End quote. So if you are not led by the Holy Spirit, you are not a child of God. The Holy Spirit will not remain in someone that ignores him. Acts 5.32, quote, And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. End quote. So that's really clear, the Holy Spirit will leave if you don't obey God. 1 John 3:24, quote, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us, by the Spirit which he hath given us. End quote. Again, the Holy Spirit only dwells in those who are obedient. Hebrews 9:14, quote, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. End quote. So the blood of Jesus is intended to cleanse you, not allow you to remain in willful sin. 2 John 1, 8-10, quote, Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth, 
and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed, end quote. Transgression is sinning, so he's saying that you aren't abiding in the gospel Jesus taught, if you are in sin, proving that we are to repent of willful sin when we first believe, and remain repentant thereafter. Matthew 5:48, quote, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. End quote. 1 Peter 1:16, quote, Because it is written, Be ye holy as I am holy, end quote. Romans 2, 6-10, quote, Who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace, to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. End quote. Not obeying the truth, as can be seen from all the scriptures in this video, includes the false doctrine of Ozas. Evil, is all sin. Romans 2, 28-29, quote, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. End quote. Romans 5:21, quote, That a sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. End quote. So it is the act of being righteous in your walk, that leads to eternal life. If you are unrighteous, you don't get eternal life. Romans 6, 1-4, quote, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. End quote. So grace is not a license to remain carnal, worldly, and sinful, grace is God's favor. We are to be a new person because we have the Holy Spirit. If you aren't new, the Holy Spirit has probably left you, or will do, unless you repent. Romans 6, 10-13, quote, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. End quote. Dead unto sin, means having stopped willfully sinning. Repented. If you are yielded unto God you will be doing his will and God is holy. Yielding to God means being submitted to Jesus. Romans 12 9, quote, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. End quote. All sin is evil to God. Remember, we are told to resist the devil, see James 4 7, run the race, see 1 Corinthians 9 24, and strive against sin, see Hebrews 12 4. Romans 6, 15 23, quote, What then, shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not, that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. 
I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. End quote. Again, can't get much clearer, sin leads to death, this is to believers. And make no mistake, this is the second death. Romans 8, 5-14, quote, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. End quote. Again, you shall live if you live by the Spirit, not the flesh, so you die, go to hell, if you live by the flesh. How do we know death referred to here, means the second death? Because it says spiritual mindedness is life, which clearly means eternal life, because we are already alive. Also cross-referencing it with Romans 8.1, Galatians 6 8, Romans 8 14, Acts 5 32, and many other scriptures easily shows this. Ephesians 4 1, quote, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, end quote. Romans 12, 1 2, quote, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God." End quote. If your body is a living sacrifice, that means you are not drinking, smoking, fornicating, committing adultery, taking drugs, self-gratifying, or living in any fleshly way. Being conformed to the world is being worldly and carnal. James 4:17, quote, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. End quote. Hebrews 13:21, quote, Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. End quote. Philippians 2:12, quote, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. End quote. Romans 13, 9-10, quote, For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. End quote. The Ten Commandments are not abolished, they are written onto the hearts of true believers. Philippians 3, 12-14, quote, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after 
if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. End quote. So this is clear, Jesus gives you the hope of eternal life but you have to strive, see Hebrews 12 4, run the race, see 1 Corinthians 9 24, walk worthy, see Ephesians 4 1, 2 Thessalonians 1 11 and Colossians 1 10, and be holy as he is holy, see 1 Peter 1 16. You don't just rest in Jesus and do nothing. In Matthew 11:28, when Jesus says I will give you rest he is talking about spiritual rest. Ephesians 1 4, quote, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, end quote. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13-14, quote, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. End quote. You see, sanctification by the Holy Spirit, which is the becoming born again process. Hebrews 12 1, quote, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us." End quote. 1 Peter 1 2, quote, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace, be multiplied. End quote. Again, sanctification and it clearly says, obedience. That's obeying the commandments. 1 John 3 3, quote, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. End quote. 2 Corinthians 7 1, quote, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. End quote. Ephesians 5, 26 27, Quote, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. End quote. Matthew 19 17, quote, So he said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. End quote. Again, you have to keep the commandments to get eternal life. John 14 23, quote, Jesus answered and said to him, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. End quote. So the Holy Spirit will not abide with anyone not keeping his commandments. Proof again that he can leave someone. And that's losing salvation. 2 Timothy 2:19, quote, Nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth those who are his, and, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. End quote. 1 John 1 7, quote, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. End quote. So we are not cleansed if we don't walk in the light, repented of willful sin. Matthew 18 8, quote, Wherefore if thy hand or foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for you to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet, to be cast into everlasting fire. End quote. I'd say God takes sin very seriously wouldn't you? 1 Corinthians 3, 16-17 Quote, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. End quote. Did you get that, defiling your body with sin, 
means God will destroy you. Romans 1, 17-18, quote, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, end quote. All unrighteousness. So believing in Jesus, means even more so you are expected to know what sin is, and God will repay. Revelation 21 8, quote, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. End quote. Notice unbelievers are a separate category, all the other sinners can, and sadly, I am sure will, include believers who have not repented of willful sin. All sinners go into the lake of fire. That's what the word of God says. So I hope these scriptures show to you what it means to become born again. Revelation 21:27, quote, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. End quote. It's incontrovertible, as plain as day. God says willful sinners will not enter into heaven. As you have seen with these proof scriptures, being born again is not a simple prayer. It is a process of becoming a new person in Christ, repenting of willful sin and living by the Spirit, in obedience to God. To be fleshly, worldly, and carnal, is not being born again. Remember that James 4.4 4 says, quote, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. End quote. So remembering that even the demons believe and tremble, see James 2.19, you can see that having just said a prayer does not mean you are born again, and you cannot rightly claim that status. You can only truthfully say you are born again if you have repented of, and are striving against sin, see Hebrews 12.4, leading to you being sanctified and without blame before God. We aren't saved until we are redeemed, or have died and gone to heaven. Any time until then, it's possible for the Holy Spirit to leave if you are not obedient. God said our hearts have to be circumcised, see Romans 2.28-29 and his laws written upon them. See Hebrews 8:10, Hebrews 10:16, and 2 Corinthians 3:3. 3, 3. I hope this helps. Be sure you are actively being born again, because Jesus said you cannot enter heaven unless you are.